Okay, so in this video we want to look at rational indices, so where the exponent is a fraction. So we've looked at our index laws, um, just focusing on whole number in positive whole number indices. We've looked at negative indices and what they mean. And now we want to have a look at what does it mean if there's a fraction in the exponent. Okay, so I just want to start off by looking at a couple of examples with various numbers and see if we can observe some patterns that we can then um, draw a conclusion from. All right, so let's um, have a look at if we've got, we want to simplify four to the power of a half and then squared. So let's think about this pattern of what happens when we have, um, you know, one power after another. We know that if we have a to the power of m and then to the power of n, that we multiply those two powers together. So this would be four to the power of half times two. Now half times two is just one, so that's four to the power of one, so that's just four. Similarly, let's work our way down the, oh, no, let's go across the, the row. Okay, so then separate to that, I want you to think about, all right, if something squared is equal to four, what does this something have to be? All right, well, we know that would be two squared is equal to four. So what we've established here is that from this row here, four to the power of a half and then squared is equal to four. Now we also know that 2 squared is equal to 4. So the only way that happens is if this thing is the same as this thing. Okay. In both cases we know that that thing squared gives us 4. So we know that 4 to the power of a half must equal 2. Okay, let's have a look at another one. 5 to the power of a half all squared. So same pattern, that would be 5 to the power of a half times 2, which is going to be 5 to the 1, and so that's just 5. Separate to that, let's think about, all right, what, what squared is equal to 5? Now, this isn't as easy as what do I have to square to get 4, but actually it's sort of almost easier, really, because the square root of 5, if I were to square that, is 5. So actually, what we know, again from over here, we know that if we take 5 and a half, sorry, 5 to the power of a half, and I know the um, font there is not very helpful, but that's 5 to the power of a half, and then square it, it equals 5. But we also know that if we take root 5 and square it, that equals 5. And so therefore, 5 to the power of a half must be the same as root 5. Sorry. 13 to the power of a half and then squared. Okay, well again, that would be 13 to the power of half times 2, which is 13 to the power of 1, and so it's just 13. Again, same question. If I wanted to square something to get 13, that would have to be root 13 squared equals 13. And again, we can see that 13 to the power of a half, when we square it, gives us 13. Root 13, when we square it, also gives us 13. And so therefore, 13 to the power of a half must be root 13. Okay, we've got a slightly different pattern happening up here, but actually let's think about, we see that 5 to the power of half is the same as the square root of 5, 13 to the power of half is the same as the square root of 13, 4 to the power of half is the same as the square root of 4, which in this case simplifies to 2. I'm sorry, square root of 4. And so we get to 2 in the end. Okay, so something to the power of a half is the same as the square root of that something. So if we've got x to the power of a half, we can conclude that that is the square root of x. Okay, And this is where thirds and indices are the same topic, because actually thirds are indices. <laughs> okay, a, power of a, a square root is a power of a half. Root 5, which is a third, can be written as 5 to the power of a half. So all our index laws apply. That's why there's a lot of, there's actually all the index laws, it's the same thing. You know, it's like, you know, a, a b to the power of n um, is a to the n times b to the n. Similarly, square root of a b is square root of a times square root of b. And that's because square root of a b means a b to the power of a half, which means a to the power of a half, b to the power of a half. It's just following the same index laws. Okay, So power of a half means the square root. All right, let's have a think about the second set of um, examples here. So we're going to look at the power of a third. Now, some of you might be able to conclude what you think it's going to be already, but let's let's sort of test that and let's work our way through these. So again, if we had eight to the power of a third and then cubed that, that's eight to the power of a third times three, which is eight to the power of one, so that's eight. If I ask myself, something cubed equals eight, I know two cubed is eight, okay? So again, we wanna draw some parallels here from what we know. We know that when we take 8 to the power of a third and we cube it, we get 8. We also know when we take 2 cube, two and we cube it, we get 8. Okay, So therefore, 8 to the power of a third must be the same as 2. If we have 5 to the power of a third and then we cube that, 
Okay, 5 to the power of a third times 3 is 5 to the power of 1, which is 5. Okay, so we know when we take 5 to the power of a third and we cube it, we get 5. We also know, if we think about, well, what would I have to cube to get 5? Well, I could also describe that as the cube root of 5 cubed would be 5. And so therefore, again, same logic, if 5 to the power of a third, when I cube it, gives me 5, and five and the cube root of 5 cubed also gives me 5, then those two things must be the same as each other. 5 to the power of a third must be the same as the cube root of 5. Let's go back to that um, previous example where we found that 8 to the power of a third was equal to 2. Let's think about that again. 2 is the cube root of 8. Okay, So 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. 5 to the power of a third is the cube root of 5, which doesn't simplify any further than that. 27 to the power of a third times 3, so looking down here, again, we apply one power after another. We've got 27 to the power of a third times 3, which is 27 to the power of 1, so 27. If we ask ourselves, what would we have to cube to get 27? Well, I know that 3 cubed is 27. So again, if I take 27 to the power of a third and cube it, I get 27. But also, if I take 3 and cube it, I get 27. And so therefore, 27 to the power of a third must equal 3. And remembering, 3 is the cube root of 27. So a power of a third is a cube root. Let's be careful how we write the cube root. Okay, different to 3 times the square root of x. It is the cube, so a smaller 3 in the sort of crook of the radical sign. Okay. So um, x to the power of a third is the same as the cube root of x. And so we can generalise our observations above. Okay, x to the power of 1 on n is the nth root of x. If you think about this generally, we're saying that x to the power of 1 on n, if we raise that to the power of n, we would just get x. So they're opposite things. So if you're squaring something, the opposite of that is square rooting. So therefore, um, the power of a half is the same as the square root. If you're cubing something, the opposite of that is cube rooting. Therefore, the power of a, of a third is the cube root. If the opposite, of, if you're raising something to a power of five, the opposite of that is the fifth root. Okay. So therefore, a power of a fifth is the fifth root. Okay. We would see that x to the power of one fifth and then to the power of five gives us x. We also know that the fifth root of x the power of 5 gives us x and so therefore these are the same thing okay all right um so let's have a think about all right that's if we had unit fractions so a unit fraction is a fraction where the numerator is 1 so x to the power of 1 on 2 1 on 3 1 on 4 1 on 5 1 on 6 etc what about if we have non-unit fractions so let's say if we have 25 to the power of 5 on 2 Okay, so what's actually happening here is we need to think about this as really being two powers in one. Okay, five on two is the same as one half times five. Okay, so if I think about this, is actually twenty-five to the power of one half times five. Now, when do we multiply powers? We multiply powers together in this situation. So let's reverse that. Okay, so this is the same as having twenty-five to the power of a half and then to the power of 5. Or we could write it the other way around, 25 to the power of 5 and then to the power of a half. But 25 to the power of 5 is going to be an enormous number. I'd much rather it's easier to make the number smaller by doing the power of a half before you then do a power of 5. So it's essentially two powers in one. It's a power of a half and then a power of 5. Okay, Or you could do them in the other order, but whichever order is easier. Now 25 to the power of a half, that's the square root of 25. So that's 5 to the power of 5. And then 5 to the power of 5, now let's just generate some powers of 5. So 5 squared is 25, cubed is 125, power of 4 is 625. Um, that's about as far as I go off the top of my head. So multiplying this by 5 again gives us um, 5 to the power of 5. Um, so 600 times 5 is 3,000, 25 times 5 is 125, so 3125. Okay. The key idea, though, is that it is two powers in one. Okay, so I'm just going to clear that to 5. So if we have 49 to the power of 3 on 2, we can think about 3 on 2 is half times 3. So this is the same as 49 to the power of a half and then cubed. Now 49 to the power of a half is the square root of 49, so that's 7 cubed. And 7 cubed is 343. 8 to the power of 4 thirds. So we can think about that as being 8 to the power of a third and then to the power of 4. 
So 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 27 to the power of 2 thirds, well that is 27 to the power of a third squared. 27 to the power of a third is the cube root of 27, that's 3. And then 3 squared is 9. All right, what about if we have power of negative 2 fifths? Well, negatives are separate. We've learnt about negative powers. We know that that means we need to take the reciprocal. It means that this is really um, 32 to the power of positive 2 fifths, but on the denominator of a fraction. Okay, so it's 1 on 32 to the power of 2 fifths. Let's work out what 32 to the power of 2 fifths is. So it's 32 to the power of a fifth and then squared. So 32 to the power of a fifth is the fifth root of 32. Now I know that 2 to the power of 5 is 32, which means 2 is the fifth root of 32. Okay. So this is 1 over, that's 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4, so it's a quarter. Okay, so if we have x to the power of m over n, it is x to the power of 1 on n, all to the power of m. Or we could do that the other way around, x to the power of m, and then all to the power of 1 on n. However, it's usually easier to do this version because you take the root, you make the number smaller before you then make it bigger. As I said, before when we had 25 to the power of 5 on 2, we could think about that as 25 to the power of a half and then to the power of 5, or we could think about that as 25 to the power of 5 and then to the power of a half. Now I can work out that 25 to the power of a half is 5 and then I only need to do 5 to the power of 5 whereas here I'm trying to do 25 to the power of 5 which is going to be enormous and then I'm going to be trying to square root that enormous number and I won't know what the square root of that is off the top of my head. So it's always easier to make the number smaller before you then make it larger. Okay, So this is usually the easier option Okay, when you're trying to actually evaluate it. But in terms of what's going on, it's essentially two powers in one. You can think about m over n as being m times 1 over n, okay? And so you just apply one power after the other. All right, let's work through some more examples. Evaluate the following, 49 to the power of a half. So 49 to the power of a half is the square root of 49, which is 7. 64 to the power of a third is the cube root of 64. Now I know that 4 cubed is 64 and this is where it's really important that you know some of those basic index facts because you're going to have trouble with the roots if you don't um, if you don't know that 4 cubed is 64 you're going to have trouble knowing that the cube root of 64 therefore is 4. Okay, 81 to the power of a quarter. Okay so again I know that 3 to the power of 4 is 81 and so therefore the fourth root of 81 which is 81 to the power of a quarter, must be 3. 4 to the power of 3 on 2. Okay, so this is 4 to the power of a half cubed. 4 to the power of a half is the square root of 4, so that's 2 cubed, and 2 cubed is 8. 8 to the power of 2 thirds. Okay, so it's 8 to the power of a third squared. 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8, which is 2, and 2 squared is 4. 81 to the power of 3 quarters, okay, so this is 81 to the power of a quarter, which we worked out in part C, and then we're going to cube it. 81 to the power of a quarter we did up here, it's the fourth root of 81, which is 3. 3 cubed is 27. Okay, then we've got G, 8 on 27 to the power of negative a third. Okay, so the negative power, let's deal with that first. It means we take the reciprocal of the um, base, so it's 27 over 8 to the power of positive a third. And then if we have a fraction, we, we know we can do 27 to the power of a third over 8 to the power of a third. 27 to the power of a third is the cube root of 27, which is 3. Um, 8 to the power of a third is the cube root of 8, which is 2. And so that is 3 over 2. Okay, in reverse, express the following in index form. Okay, so we've got the cube root of 8x to the 7. Okay, first of all, we can split this up. That's the cube root of 8 which is just going to be 2, sorry, I'm just trying to write that back in there, um, times the cube root of x to the 7. All right, so that's just going to be 2. Now, cube root of x to the 7 is x to the 7 and then to the power of a third. And so that is 2 times x to the 7 times a third, which is 7 thirds. Okay, the fifth root of 2p to the 4. Okay, there's not much we can do about that fifth root of 2 fifth root of 2 times the fifth root of p to the 4, 
which is the fifth. Maybe I'll write that as 2 to the power of a fifth because we want index form. Um, and then this is p to the 4 to the power of a fifth. Okay, and so we've got 2 to the power of a fifth times um, p to the power of 4 fifths. It's probably just as nice to have that written as 2p to the 4 all to the power of a fifth, to be honest. Um, either would be both our index form, really, in this particular case. All right, 7 root 7. Okay, so if we think about this, that is 7 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of a half. We know when we're multiplying things with the same base, we can add the powers. So it's 7 to the power of 1 plus a half. 1 plus a half is 3 over 2. So 7 root 7 is the same as 7 to the power of 3 on 2. All right, 6, a, 6 times the square root of a to the 4b to the 11. Okay, so this is 6 times a to the 4b to the 11 all to the power of a half. We know that we can apply that power to each of those. So it's 6 times a to the power of 4 times a half, which is 2, and b to the power of 11 times a half, which is just going to be 11 over 2. All right. Question three, simplify expressing your answer with positive exponents. Okay, x to the power of two thirds divided by x to the power of a half. So we are dividing things with the same base so we can subtract the powers. This is x to the power of two thirds minus one half. So it's just about knowing how to work with fractions. So when we're subtracting fractions, we need a common denominator, which will be six. So two thirds is the same as four sixths minus one half, which is the same as three sixths. And so we just have x to the power of 1 sixth. Okay, part b, 125 n to the negative 6 all to the power of a third. Okay, so that's 125 to the power of a third times n to the power of negative 6 times a third is negative 2. Okay, now 125 to the power of a third, that's a cube root of 125. Now I know that 5 cubed, oops, 5 cubed is 125. And so therefore the cube root of 125 is 5. So this is 5 times n to the negative 2. Now remember, n to the negative 2 means 1 on n squared. And so we've got 5 times 1 on n squared, which is 5 over 1 times 1 on n squared. So it's 5 on n squared. Expressing our answer with positive indices. So again, worry about the positive exponent thing at the end. I'm just going to rewrite that n. It looks a bit like an h. That's good. Um, but yeah, all your index laws apply as usual. So we've got 32 e to the 5 f to the 10. So that is 32 to the power of, and then all to the power of a fifth, sorry. So it's 32 to the power of a fifth times e to the power of 5 times a fifth, which is going to be 1, and f to the power of 10 times a fifth, which is going to be 2. 32 to the power of a fifth is the fifth root of 32. Again, I know that 2 to the power of 5 is 32, and so therefore the fifth root of 32 is 2, um, and then e f squared. And then we've got the fourth root of 16 t to the power of 8. Okay, so that is 16 to the power of a quarter, the fourth root of 16, um, times t to the 8 to the power of a quarter. Okay, so 16 to the power of a quarter, the fourth root of 16 is 2, because 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Um, and then t to the 8 and then to the power of a quarter is, we multiply 8 times a quarter, which is 2, so it's t squared. So we've just got 2t squared. Okay, so some practice with fractional indices in exercise 3H.